Sending greetings to all of you and welcoming all of you on behalf of the organizers, the Central Council for Research in Homeopathy, which is an autonomous body under the Ministry of Ayush Government of India, and on behalf of the World Integrated Medicine Forum, to this two days discussions and deliberations which we have on the regulation of homeopathic medicinal products. And this, ladies and gentlemen, as you know, this is the first of its kind forum which we are having in India. India leading this forum. And thank you to all of you. We have huge participation from 25 countries who are participating. So thank you to all of you for taking these long journeys and uh, being with us in this very special forum. Now, we have uh, close to 10 uh, internationally renowned and almost 30 Indian homeopathic industries which are participating along with the uh, very renowned clinicians, practitioners, regulators, policy makers joining us, uh, industry people, as we dwell further into the regulation aspect. Uh, so thank you indeed. Uh, we, as we look into framing these national as well as global strategies towards regulation, we invite the perspective of everyone. So we are going to be, as we go in our discussions, we present the regulator's perspective, the industry perspective, along with the policy makers' perspective, and uh, also looking into the practitioner's perspective. 10.45, we are expecting our Honourable Minister, the Honourable Minister of State, Independent Charge, the Ministry of Ayush, Sri Sripad Yasu Naikji, joining us as the Chief Guest, who is going to be inaugurating that forum, along with the other distinguished dignitaries and officials from the Ministry who are going to be part of that session. But right now, uh, without much ado, we start with the first session that is more of a context-setting uh, session and bringing you more of the practitioner's perspective. We have already on the stage, on the head table, being joined by the honorable chairs of this session, Dr. V.K. Gupta, the chairman of the Scientific Advisory Committee, Central Council for Research in Homeopathy from India. Our, uh, Second co-chair, Dr. S. Soren, the advisor, homeopathy from the Ministry of Ayush. Joining us as the eminent speakers of the session, Dr. Helen Renu, the president of the European Committee for Homeopathy and the general secretary of the Societe Savant of the Homeopathy, that is uh, SSH. She's a general practitioner who's working in Paris suburb since almost 1995 and also teaching classical homeopathy at the INHF Paris, where she has been the general secretary for the four years from 2008 to 12. And she brings in here the European practitioner's perspective on the regulation of the homeopathic medicinal products. Our next eminent speaker, Dr. Alok Parikh of the Parikh Hospital and Research Center. He has been very active in the homeopathic practice since 1981. He has an outdoor homeopathic clinic which uh, caters to almost 200 patients every day. And besides also, he also has an indoor homeopathic hospital with 50 beds where uh, chronic patients are provided indoor facilities and uh, pre-operative and post-operative treatment is given in homeopathy. Also a rural homeopathic center where preventive and community health care is provided in homeopathy. He's also a teacher of international acclaim and has been the international president of the International Homeopathic Medical League. He brings in the physician's perspective on the regulation of homeopathic medicinal products. So I would like to first hand over to our esteemed chairs for their opening remarks and then we move to the speakers. Thank you. I have great pleasure to welcome all the delegates to the World Forum on Homeopathic Medicine Regulation, which is organized jointly by Central Council for Research in Homeopathy and the World Integrated Medicine Forum. Today, Homeopathy is being practiced in 86 countries in the world, and more than 500 million patients are being treated through homeopathy world over. For the overall global development of homeopathy, it is now essential to have a standardization of drug laws and different homeopathy pharmacopoeias available in the world. We need to have in-depth deliberations on the diverse issues confronting homeopathic drug manufacturing industry and the concern of the homeopathy practitioners world over. There can be difference of opinion on various issues 
but we should evolve a consensus keeping in view the scientific and legal aspect in our mind. I have one formula to share with you, that all diversities encountered during our discussion at different platforms can be solved, provided we keep the overall interest of homeopathy before self. I congratulate the organizers who have brought homeopathy pharmaceutical industry and practitioner on one platform for the ultimate benefit of homeopathy. In my 47 years of professional career, it is for the first time that such an event is taking place in India as homeopathy medicine regulation. Thank you. Now I now I call upon Dr. Helene from France. She will highlight the European practitioner perspective on the regulation of homeopathy medicine products. Madam Helene, please. Dear Chair, dear colleagues, thank you. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to uh, to be the voice of the practitioners in this burning issue of the remedies availability. Okay, I don't need. First, I want to make a short introduction of the ECH. I'm the president of the European Committee for Homeopathy. Uh, it's an international non-profit organization that represents all the medical doctors in Europe that are specialized in homeopathy. Now, we can say that have an additional qualification in homeopathy. It means around 40 associations in 25 countries in Europe. And if we, we can say, if we see the last figure that are available, we can say that we have around 45,000 medical doctors in Europe that, that are qualified in homeopathy. But we have many more uh, GPs that are practicing homeopathy without, without the full homeopathic training. Roughly, we have 45 to 40 percent of the GPs that use homeopathy from time to time, and among them, we have six to eight percent that use it on a regular basis. I think I want to stress the unique position of ECH because we are an umbrella organization of medical doctors, but we host also a group of patients and a group of pharmacists, and this gives up the opportunity to be the voice of all these people, and this voice needs to be heard. Because we, we represent medical doctors that wish, need to have a good access to all homeopathic medicines, but also pharmacists, small and big pharmacists, and patients. And we completely understand the need to have both small and big providers, and need for uh, then they support each other. But the ultimate goal of our work is our patients, and the availability of homeopathic medicinal products is, um, is the need of our patients first. So I would like to address the, pers the current perception we have of the European medical doctors have about the regulation of homeopathic remedies. What we feel in our daily practice, and I experience it in my work, is that more and more homeopathic medicinal products are not available. And also that a wrong information is circulating among the patients and among the practitioners about some remedies that don't exist anymore. I hear this very often. And definitely, we lack information. We are not able to say which remedies are no longer authorized, which ones are still authorized but are not sold for financial reason. So we are in a cloud. We miss remedies, we hear wrong information, we don't know how to reach the right one. And the patient reports wrong information to us. And uh, the interaction between the European and the national regulation are not working perfectly. We cannot benefit the mutual recognition procedure because there is really a lack of harmonization between the different European countries. I mean, each, each national agency has its own rules, and this rule um, 
impedes the, the harmonization and the mutual support of the work that's done in each country, and this creates a health inequality among Europe. And I want to give a few examples. And I know that most of you will say that my information is not accurate. It's purposely, it's the information we get as medical doctors when I ask feedback from my colleagues all, all among Europe, we have this information. And maybe we, you will help me understand better what's going on really. For example, in the Netherlands, the registration of the homeopathic medicinal products took place between 2002 and 2006. But due to the high price of this process, and the high price of the registration is a motto that comes all the time. I think it's a main problem. Only 20% of the remedies have been registered, and the other one being only available as magistral preparation, and in the Netherlands it's made by the Anuman Apotheek. But now the master company has decided to produce in Germany to reduce the cost, and the permission for German production to the Dutch market has again diminished this percentage to 10%. It means that 90% of the remedies are only available to magistral preparation. And the Ministry of Health in the Netherlands has also decided to allow the delivery of the remedies over the counter only when the indication is written on the package. Is not written on the package, sorry. In Italy, the huge increase of registration prices, always the same motto, is responsible for the disappearance of many homeopathic medicinal products. And recently, there have been meetings between the companies, the ministry, and the Italian medicine agency, and the registration prices have been reduced. But once again, the patients and the medical doctors have not been involved in the process. And they would like to make sure that the, con the concern will be addressed because the concern of the patients, the medical doctors, are not exactly the same as the, those of the companies. And most probably, the companies may only apply for registration for the remedies that are the more profitable. In France, I talk of my own country, we have got a big French laboratory, and it's currently stopping preparing many small homeopathic medicinal products which are authorized but are not cost effective. And it's also reducing the range of the potencies available. And we have a few private pharmacies that are still providing those remedies but they cannot satisfy the old French market because we are a huge community of medical doctors practicing homeopathy in France. And this is the worst example I could find. In Estonia, the homeopathic medicinal products are not available in the pharmacies. And it's forbidden to order them by internet or to send, or to send them by post. And they are not, the homeopathic medicinal products are not registered because there's no company, there's no organization that can afford the high registration fees once again. So I will give you just some simple facts. The majority of the medical doctors with an additional qualification in homeopathy, we practice an individualized homeopathy. And therefore, we need the widest range possible of single remedies available. And you know, in homeopathy, if one homeopathic medicinal product is missing, it cannot be replaced by another one. And in the end, the patient is not cured. When you miss one remedy, it's one patient which is not cured. And the less frequently prescribed homeopathic medicinal products may be only available through magistral preparations, and the local pharmacist can provide them. So there's really a need for a good cooperation between the different sized providers of homeopathic medicinal products to help the small pharmacies taking over the magistral preparation work. So in the end, I may, I may say the regulators should not only communicate with big providers when they are consulting about homeopathic medicinal products. 
the representatives of the patients of the small pharmacies and all the medical doctors should be considered as important stakeholders too. We are important stakeholders. Please think of us when you're regulating homeopathic medicinal products. So ECH, if you go on our website, you can see that we aim to provide high quality homeopathic care in the medical context integrate high quality homeopathy into European healthcare and support the availability of safe, high quality homeopathic medicines. So we remain at the disposal of all the regulators and all the stakeholders in the field to cooperate for the benefits of our patients. Thank you for your attention. for your deliberations, and I fully agree with you that the quality of medicine is very essential for the success of homeopathy practitioners. There are diverse uh, regulations in various parts of the country, and there's a time has come, we have to do harmonization of those regulations in the interest of the development of homeopathy in the country, world over rather. Thank you. Now I call upon Dr. Alok Parikh, President of Liga, to give his deliberation on the subject. Mr. Chairman, dear colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, thank you, Elena, President, European Committee for Homeopathy, for enumerating the position's perspective. At the onset, I must congratulate the organizers for bringing the two pieces together, the physician and the pharmacist, the two vital pillars in our system. I stand here today, friends, not just as the president of International Homeopathic League, but one of the members of the physician's fraternity. And the topic, concerns us all, a very vital topic. Regulation of homeopathic medicinal products, the physician's perspective. Friends, just to give you a brief idea of LMHI, world's biggest, oldest association of medical homeopaths, born on 10th of September 1925 in the Dutch city of Rotterdam, looks at this burning topic very vitally. Covering more than 70 countries all over the globe and a very large number of physicians. Coming to the first point of our talk, the regulations and the effect on our practice. Friends, the discrepancies arising out of non-standardization are innumerous. It will be difficult for me to enumerate them here because of the paucity of time. But let's take a small example of preparing our dilution, the basic heart of our medicine. A dilution is being prepared in numerous ways by different units. A handmade dilution or a dilution, homeopathic dilution, prepared by different potentizers, mechanical potentizers, varying day and day and day. This greatly handicaps the reward from international exchanges. You find difference in France, you find difference in Brazil, you find difference in India. And this makes the physician bias. Bias in choosing the scale of dynamization they trust. This is very, very important baseline problem. Some of the countries allow dynamization only to a certain scale, as my producer said about France about the Netherlands, and of course, India. 
Second important is the liberal rule for products, not following the homeopathic cardinal principle of simplex. This is very, very important, my dear friends. I understand the big pharmacy, pharmaceutical industry needs big products, but not at the cost of basic homeopathic dilutions. The big products are, I understand, important to survive, but they should not be loosely leveled as homeopathic product. This is very, very important. And this is causing a deterioration to the classical practice of homeopathy. A very important point from physician's perspective. Coming to the second important point, that is current regulations and need for improvement. Again, they are innumerable, difficult to mention here, but they hit us hard at the bottom. International harmonization. Ours is a science based on a definite law and enacted by definite principles. Physician needs a global standard pharmacopoeia. We don't need a different for India, different from Brazil, different for Russia, different for so-and-so countries. We need homeopathy, friends, is a definite science and needs a definite global pharmacopoeia. This is the need for the physician. And, of course, the strict implementation. Some of the countries don't allow a dilution beyond a certain dynamization. And the physician has to get from other countries. Some of the countries don't allow the preparation of the no swords, the animal product. And they have to get from different countries. We have to look for our procuring our dilutions from different, different parts of the globe. And at times, this becomes difficult and not very practical. Standardization needs to be from basic brewing to procurement of the botanical raw material, to manufacturing the homeopathic way, to storage, and to dispersion. All these steps involves the physician's stake, and they are very important. I cannot go into the detail because of the paucity of time allotted to me. And of course, the better dissemination of the updates. Homeopathic remedies and the process of manufacturing is seen through the glasses of conventional medicine. This has to be overcome. Homeopathy has its own definite methodology. It has its own true method. And so we have to lay stress on upon uniqueness, which unfortunately is lacking. We ought to have our own and unique legal status, status for homeopathic remedies. Coming to the LMHI initiatives, to the platform I belong, LMHI has done a lot to bring together the pharmacy and the physician. We are working on an international homeopathic pharmacopoeia, which is the need of our, and I must thank and congratulate the different bodies, including the CCRH, whose uh, research secretary happens to be here, Dr. Manchanda, and who also happens to be the director general of CCRH, that we are working in harmony to achieve this goal. And I'm sure the day is not away when we'll have one standard global homeopathic pharmacopoeia. We are working on homeopathic proving guidelines. We have already prepared a document, and the, international, and the president of the European Committee for Homeopathy is here. We are working in harmony with the ECH and working on guidelines for the document for harmonizing homeopathic proving. A homeopathic drug proving, my dear friends, is nowadays considered to be a clinical trial. When I say clinical trial, I mean a clinical trial. And that is a homeopathic drug proving. And we have prepared a guideline 
the guidelines are based on the ICH. Note for guidance on good clinical practice. And this concerns the physician. They have their objective of conducting scientifically accountable provings that are in full agreement of homeopathic theory. With the interaction of acclaimed medical researchers and pharmacists from around the globe, we have arrived at a consensus which is in harmony with the legal requirements of various regions of the globe to define a homeopathic remedy. My dear friends, LMHI is working every day of the year, every minute of the year, by its working groups, and the pharmacy working group is not lagging behind. Our previous pharmacy secretary from Brazil is here. She will highlight you on what we, are, we have done, what we are doing, and what we propose to do in future. Active discussions on the pharmaceutical matters are held every day, and all the developments are being enumerated throughout the globe. This is a kind of global troubleshooter, and physicians are the stakeholders. I welcome you all to join different working groups of LMHI to any of the working group, and you are the stakeholder. Uh, because of the paucity of time, my dear friends, I had many things to say, but I would conclude on behalf of the LMHI International Executive Council for inviting me here to this wonderful forum. And I must say, having traveled all over the globe, I have not seen such a good energy that we find here in this forum. I congratulate the organizers all of you for this wonderful forum, and I wish a very positive outcome from this forum and for the future of homeopathy. Thank you very much, my dear friends. Dr. Alok, I fully well agree with you that the quality of medicine can only be possible when we start from the right product, because the product which was taken at the time of drug proving has to be there. If there is any defect in that, the, the, the finished product has to be not good. And as you have rightly pointed out, there are various, in various countries, various ways of potentization is being done. So we need to do, do have harmony, uniformity in that of, of type of potentization. And we should have a potentization as per the advice of Dr. Honeyman. And I fully agree with you that time has come, then we have to have a global homopathy pharmacopoeia to have uniformity world over. There is a lot of diversity in the various parts of the country. And I, I tell you, India has a very good infrastructure, official recognition, and the entire world is looking towards India also in that direction. And that is why we have held a, a big conference of this type where people from 25 countries have gathered together to share their difficulties and problems which are being faced in various parts of the country regarding regulations and in order to produce quality drug. And the importance of this quality drug has risen because this world all round criticism homeopathy in various parts of the world. It is because we are progressing. Whenever you progress, opposition has to be there. So there is an organized onslaught on homeopathy. And I am happy to share with you, in my, in my country, at, at present, 26.3% annual growth rate of the sale of homeopathy medicine is there. It clearly indicates there is a resurgence or demand of homeopathy in my country and world over. So uh, now it, it is on us, lies on us, that we, if we are able to provide right quality homeopathy medicine, the future homeopathy will be bright. I am sure with the, with the, in the in two, next two days, your deliberation will bring some consensus where we will be able to provide quality of homeopathy uh, drug. Apart from that, I like to highlight, every time we say medicine was wrong, it did not work, but we forget the three fingers are pointing toward a physician. Homeopathy medicines are given in minute doses. If there is no similarity or no individualization, homeopathy medicine will not work. We should see whether the prescriber is giving right remedy or not. 
so three fingers are pointing towards me, I should see whether my prescription was correct or not. I should be able to do hard work, not to every time we blame the, blame the remedy. But the pharmaceutical has to provide a good remedy so that we have good results. If we combine together, both of them, I would say the importance of quality education of the practitioner and skill development of practitioner and quality of medicine is essential for the overall development of the homeopathy world over. Thank you.